Hi, here we are midweek, week four. The air is finally breathable again, at least where I am. I hope you're breathing good air and having a good week. I wanted to touch base and kind of bring your attention back to SharePoint to kind of reinforce this idea that we have two legs in our history. We have the formal analysis and the historical context. And it seems as if people have really kind of dug into strongly a sense of the pleasure of looking at the art and analyzing it on the basis of your senses. In general, I find people feel less comfortable working with the historical context, which is more and more something we need to richly develop. So let's talk about that a little bit. This was looking very closely at Rembrandt's The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Tulp, very famous painting, and lots to talk about in terms of formal analysis, but also lots to ask about what's happening in this world where people wear these very uncomfortable looking collars and are undergoing this process of dissection. So Susan, for instance, asked, why is there only one guy, Dr. Tulip, wearing the hat? Is the hat a symbol of status? Great question. And yes, hats were very much a symbol of status, important symbols of status that didn't die out until the 1950s. And then so Ronnie's realizing that once you start asking those questions about their clothing, their status, their identities in a social world, you start to wonder about what's happening with their medical profession. Wonder what scientific breakthroughs may have been going on when this painting was done. That's a very big deal because this class is covering from the 1600s to the 20th century and the flourishing of medicine, the growth of medicine in ever more precise and, and um, accurate knowledge is going to be a huge question in the way life changes. In fact, in the new module, the upcoming module that was just opened, you will start to be looking at the beginnings of the industrial revolution. But we're not there yet. Right now, you're very focused on France from the 17th century to the early 18th century, this pivotal moment. And you're looking here in the first module kind of at the relationship of art for the political elite. And then in the second module, you will actually be coming in contact with ideas about science and the Enlightenment, which grow out of this culture of 18th century France. So in today's discussion about this style we call Rococo, I'm definitely asking you to think about the style, right? The way it looks. And I started out by talking about how it looks and how I find it cloying. I just think that's way too many swirly, fancy, ribbony things. But the joke here, of course, is that Actually, whether I like it or not doesn't matter in our history because we are trying to reconstruct the period I, meaning the viewer of that time period, such as Madame Pompadour herself. What did she see, think, and feel when she looked at herself rendered in this style? Why did she want her favorite artist to paint her this way? Boucher is clearly meeting the desires of the patron. Madame de Pompadour, as all artists did at the time. So this idea of the period I is very important because it asks us, why did these people who looked at this art in this time period, who made this art, why did they find this to be valuable, this look for art? It's very different than how art will look in other times and places. So what I'm asking you to do in this is really to kind of imagine your way into the viewer of the time and to do that by drawing in things that you learned about in the videos and the readings. So in this module, you've been provided with what I hope are a rich array of materials to get you thinking about the time period, right? The textbook, other artworks such as Watteau's Pilgrimage, to Cythera, very well explained in this video, and certainly the explanation of what a salon is and who Madame Pompadour was, so that you can imagine that this painting wasn't just 
made to sit on a wall. It was actually made to be part of this world that she belongs to. And by this world, we mean the physical world of the salon environment, but also the social world of her nobles and royals, the aristocrats, who are her social colleagues, her social milieu, that's a French word for environment, her social world, as well as the, the kind of broader idea of being a person of the 18th century. Because what you want to understand in this class is that different periods lead to different mindsets and different people in different periods. The mindset of Madame Pompadour, who's living out this dream world of luxury and intellectual and cultural achievement that's different than what it would have been for her maid who cleans her dresses or her shoes or makes her fire in the fireplace. And it's different than what it will be for people living much later. So basically, I'm asking you to role play, to decide who you're going to be someone from the 18th century, because I want you to start being conscious of how different viewers see differently an artwork. So the viewer of this time period is looking for something specific. And that was my point in saying, well, okay, I'm disparaging the Rococo, but I want you to retort to that. Like, Madam, I, I began this this little game of a discussion by saying, I don't like this artwork. <laughs> it's, it's, I feel like it's an overproduced advertisement for rich people's luxury lifestyles, right? But I want you to actually argue with that. That's, you're going to retort, you're going to say, no, you're wrong. And you're going to say that not from the perspective of you as an individual, but you as a person who inhabits that time. So you can put to words how someone at that time would have found this valuable, meaningful, enchanting, how they would have enjoyed it. So that you can start to see that style isn't just about what an artist likes, but it's a reflection of a time period. And as art historians were digging up the past, an artwork outlives the past. She's dead, she's gone. The artwork still lives. And we're using it the way an archeologist digs up a lost city to reconstruct the life, the culture of that city. It's exactly what you're practicing doing here. And you wanna get more and more specific about who is looking at the artwork, at what time period, and what is it about their time period that makes all of these artistic elements important to them.